Our meditation scripture for this evening is Psalms 46, verse 10. Psalms 46 and verse 10. During this shelter in place order, people are finding any number of ways to pass the time. Musicians invite fans to tune in to YouTube channels for free concert listening. In Italy, the citizens open their windows at night and join a chorus of musical harmony. Comedians work from home to broadcast some comic relief for these anxiety-producing times. Of course, online activity continues to increase, hopefully for the better and not the worse from the internet. In my own subdivision, I have noticed neighbors working in their yards to prepare for spring and improve their curb appeal. Others find this to be a great time to indulge their hobbies and personal interests. Parents are now discovering things about their children that they never have known. After a few weeks in the house with their kids, many parents will gladly return to work. Some folks are just plain old bored. In any case, the pandemic definitely brought the world to a near standstill. According to the Bible, a standstill may be one of the best things you can experience when otherwise faced with fear and anxiety. Understand that long before the coronavirus, God's people have had experiences with fear and uncertainty. The present reality may be new to you, but is not new to mankind. Take, for example, Moses' attempts to lead the stubborn Israelites from captivity to the promised land. Often, they displayed a tremendous amount of stress, anxiety, and fear. In Exodus 14, they were hardly on their way from Egyptian bondage when their fears revealed their lack of faith in God's providence to deliver them to the promised land. As Pharaoh's army pursued them, the Israelites were, according to Exodus 14 and verse 10, sore afraid. That phrase, sore afraid, literally means they were terrified. So if these days of viral infections terrifies you, remember that this is not the first time a child of God has been terrified. The Lord has worked to bring a calm to terrified hearts before. Moses told the people in verse 13 of Exodus chapter 14 to stand still. Yet again, Moses in Numbers chapter 9 verse number 8 commanded the people to stand still. This instance referenced the keeping of the Passover. In particular, certain men had become defiled by the body of a dead man. In the Mosaic law, you could not be considered a part of the congregation or the collective of God's people had you been present or had you touched a dead person. They inquired about how to make their offering, given that their defilement forced them to be separated from other Israelites. They needed an answer about the predicament they were in, and the initial response was to stand still. Even Samuel once called for a time to stand still. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 9, or chapter 9, in verse number 27, before Samuel anointed Saul king over Israel, he told Saul to tell the servant that they had to move on but it was important for Saul to stand still prior to his impending ordination as king. Another directive to stand still is seen in our meditation text, Psalms 46, verse 10. There, the psalmist pens lyrics to reflect on triumphant victory in the power and providence of God. It reflects both a historical account of God's past victories, as well as provides a confident assurance and future trust in God's awesome power. Now, I want you to go back to these accounts that were just mentioned and notice a very important lesson about standing still. In Exodus 14, verse 13, they were told to stand still for the purpose of seeing the salvation of the Lord. In Numbers 9 and verse 8, they were told to stand still to hear the Lord. In 1 Samuel 9, verse 27, Saul was instructed to stand still so that he could read the word of God. In Psalms 46 and 10, the instruction to be still benefited the individual because he would then be able to know God. 
Again, stand still or be still always represents four things. It represents, number one, seeing God, number two, hearing God, number three, reading God, or number four, knowing God. Standing still never references simple idleness or laziness. It never means more time for yourself or the indulgence in personal pursuits and pleasures. The blessing of standing still or being still means time to refresh your faith by a greater and more intense focus on the Lord God. Maybe you need to see him more. Maybe you need to hear him more. Maybe you need to read him more, or maybe you need to know him more. But certainly there's value in being still and standing still. You cannot exchange fear for faith until you get to know God better. You cannot exchange stress for strength until you see God like you have never seen him before. Now, let's admit it. Many of us have been outright too busy for God. We have prioritized our personal agendas above God's kingdom business. Some go a whole day without reverently acknowledging the giver of life. Some easily modify their requirement to attend Sunday worship, to indulge in social, personal, or leisure activities as if God himself has not commanded their presence. Across the world, church attendance continues to decrease, but sports continue to thrive. More and more underage young people still under the subjection of parents get to view church as an option as opposed to a requirement. No wonder God sent an unseen virus to say, be still and stand still. I am sure that this blanket indictment causes a level of discomfort to those who feel the aforementioned statements do not reference them specifically. Some will readily defend their choices. Remember, you must answer to God with a good conscience. Therefore, I do not prejudge you, but you are to examine yourself to understand your own standing with the Lord, who will ultimately judge you. Could he be telling you to be still or stand still? That's a question you may want to answer now, lest you have to explain yourself in the judgment. This time may be a clarion call from heaven that attitudes, actions, and activities of mankind demand a divine order from God by way of a virus for us to be still and stand still so that we may better see him, hear him, read him, and know him. Are you bored? Do you not find yourself with extra time on your hands? Will you look at a YouTube video? Will you work in your garden? Or will you hear the voice of God speaking through an unseen force saying it's time to be still and stand still to see, hear, read, and know God better? May God bless you in these difficult days to stand still and see God, hear God, read God, and know God. Tune in tomorrow night at 7 p.m. as we continue our nightly talk, a few minutes with the minister, with words from the master.